Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. Um, Thanksgiving just happened here, and like a lot of you, uh, we probably had a bunch of yummy food that we ate, but now we are stuck dealing with all the leftovers. In our house for Thanksgiving, I do make cranberry sauce from scratch, um, but I find that after I do that, I am stuck with a bunch of leftover fresh cranberries. At our local market, I do purchase the big bag of cranberries. It's often less expensive to do that, uh, and they're often a better quality to do that. Uh, we do have a garden. We like to grow our own fruits and vegetables when we can. I actually do have cranberry plants growing outside, uh, but they are still young, and cranberries take a number of years uh, in the ground to be established before they actually produce. They say if you can grow blueberries, you can grow cranberries. So we're trying to give it a go. In the meantime, I have these. So our recipe today is going to be a crustless cranberry pie. Uh, after all the cooking, I certainly don't want to roll out a bunch of pie dough, um, but I need to use these before they turn. So this is an easy recipe that is going to take one bowl and it's gonna take a pie dish. Um, you could really make it in the pie dish if you want to, it's just a little bit messier, um, so you can save yourself washing a bowl. Uh, and without further ado, we will give this a go and I'll teach you how to make this. Okay, let's talk really quickly about the supplies you're gonna need for today's recipe. First and foremost, on this one, you do want to start your oven preheating to 350 degrees. You're gonna need a large mixing bowl, it, again, you can choose to not use this and mix everything right in this dish. I find it's a little bit messier. Uh, if you do it right in the pie dish, you will need a pie dish. It's about nine inches. If you don't have a pie dish, you can use a casserole dish, a baking sheet um, that you would use for brownies. Uh, that's fine too. Use what you have. You'll need a one cup measuring cup. You'll need a half cup measuring cup a set of measuring spoons down to a quarter teaspoon at the smallest. You'll want a chopper because you're gonna chop some nuts unless you've already bought them pre-chopped. Pre now in my household, I do buy them in halves so that I have a variety of options available for me depending on what recipe I'm going to make. You'll need sugar, flour, salt, some cooking spray, Vanilla, it's vanilla extract, so that's fine. Um, this is an optional ingredient, almond extract. It is a really lovely add to the recipe. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. You'll want your leftover cranberries, about two cups. If you have more, if you have less, that's okay. Um, just use what you have. Uh, I always have leftover nuts around the holidays around. These are pecans, you can use pecans or walnuts. If you don't have any nuts around, if you don't like nuts, you can leave these out, um, but you'll need about a half cup worth if you do choose to use them. Uh, two eggs. We have farm fresh eggs. We do raise our own chickens and our egg laying hens have uh, given me two beautiful eggs for today. I've pre-cracked them. And then you'll need one stick or a half a cup of unsalted butter. Now remember, we're gonna be adding salt to this recipe, so it's really important that you do use unsalted butter, otherwise your recipe is gonna taste quite salty. To start this recipe, we're gonna start with our dry ingredients. So we're gonna start with one cup of sugar, nothing fancy, just pour it right in. Start with one cup of flour, We're going to do a quarter teaspoon of salt. To that, we are going to add our cranberries. And the reason why we're putting our cranberries in right now is because we want to get them coated with all of the beautiful dry ingredient mixture. This will help keep them from sinking in the mixture. So oftentimes when you bake with fresh fruit, if there's not something around them to coat them, what happens is they all go down to the bottom of the dish and you end up with all of your mixture on top cooked 
cooked and beautifully baked, and then all of your fruit's on the bottom and it's not dispersed throughout. So now I'm gonna mix this all together and get these cranberries beautifully coated with all the dry mixture. And you can see that they're starting to look pretty much like they're snow covered. This is optional, but at this point, if you would like to add nuts to your mixture, you'll need about a half a cup worth. So I'll just measure some out. You don't have to be very exact. And then I'm going to get them chopped nice and fine here in my chopper. Now, once you've got this incorporated, you're going to add your melted, unsalted butter to it. You're going to lightly beat those eggs and add those in. Add a little stir to incorporate. And at this point, it's going to start getting pretty thick in the mixture. It's going to be pretty sticky. That's okay. That's exactly what you want. So you can see it's starting to stick here to my spoon and look like a globbed mess. And that's exactly what you want on this. Last but not least, we're going to add our extracts. So I have today, I have vanilla extract and I have almond extract. You could actually leave both of these out and you'd be just fine. You could use both of these. If you have an orange extract, that would be really nice in this recipe. So for this recipe, I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of almond extract in it. You could add up to one teaspoon. It just depends on your flavor preferences. I like a half a teaspoon of each. And then you just incorporate that. Mix that all around in your mixture. Again, looks like a sticky mess. That's okay. Now you're going to take your cooking spray. Coat whatever baking dish you decide to use. A pie pan is pretty, but if you don't have one, again, use a casserole dish. Something that's approximately nine inches in size. You can hear the beep. My oven has preheated. And then you're just going to take mixture and dump it in. Okay. It's okay if it's not 100% incorporated. Just lightly dump it in. Give it a little bit of a spread into the pan. See what it looks like here. 
And then you're gonna stick it on into the oven. Now your Christmas pie is gonna bake for about 40 minutes um, or as long as it needs till you put a toothpick in the middle and it comes out clean when you, when you bring the toothpick out um, and then it'll be ready to go. So once our pie is done cooking, I'll come back and show you what it looks like. That's our cue everyone. Let's go check and see what we've got. my oven mitts to show you. It's very hot and you can see it's bubbling but the top has gotten a little bit of a golden color to it. That's a good sign to, for me to know that it's done. I'm going to let this sit and cool just a bit. I don't want to cut it just yet while it's still really hot out of the oven. The cranberries, uh, just like when you make cranberry sauce, when they're heated, they release juices that naturally have pectin in them. And pectin is the substance that makes recipes gel together. And so as this cools, that pectin that's released from all the cranberries is going to solidify. And it's going to make this firm up just a bit. So we're going to let this cool down until it's just warm enough to be able to touch. And then I will give this a cut and show you what it looks like on the inside. But so far, it's looking great and I'm excited to be able to show this to you. So this has had an opportunity to cool. I can now give it a nice handle. It's just warm to the touch. It's not gonna burn my hands anymore. So let's see what this looks like. It's nice and moist. Let's just stick it right on here. Get it off in one slice. And it's still warm, so you'll see it all gooey with all the berry goo. At this point, you could take a nice big scoop of vanilla ice cream. You could take a nice big glob of whipped cream, put it on here, and then you're ready to go ahead and give it a taste and serve it up to you with your family. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. I hope you learned something new that you can make using leftover cranberries. Uh, or you can just go out and get cranberries and make this and enjoy it. Uh, if you liked what you saw today, please let me know in the comments. Please subscribe to the channel. And hopefully I'll be back with some more recipes for you to learn how to make. Take care, everyone.